My name is Judith Mayer and I am the head of talks and exhibitions here at the National Theatre. First of all, just to say we are so overwhelmed by the amazing speakers that we have today. It's so brilliant to have people that you aspire to, that you read and think, wow, I'll never meet a speaker, and they're here in the room with us today, so how brilliant for us all. Um, for us, an organisation like the NT, it's really vital to have good relationships and strong relationships with organisations like UAL. We spend most of our time preparing for 2,500 people to come every night to see a show, to see something. Um, you know, in rehearsal, um, there's another 20 being teed up, there's three in rehearsal, there's three on the stage and there's three being made. So our world is full of that, it's not full of thinking about what we're doing and analysing. So that's why it's brilliant when there's people here who do that as well as making and also kind of considering, and they have time to pause. It's no wonder that a, a place like this is known as a factory for theatre, some people do call it a factory, it's all made on site, as many of you might or might not know. You can see it being made as we speak right now, upstairs from the backstage here in Watley. So it's so important for us to join together and very much a vital kind of two-way relationship. Of course the NT has an ongoing interest and I guess relationship with what design is and right from its kind of early origins has so. From the deep history of the Jocelyn Herbert Archive which is situated just a couple of minutes away in the NT Archive to the Limerick Prize for Stage Design which you can see the exhibition upstairs at the moment where 12 young emerging designers get the opportunity to work with a UK based theatre company and then one is realised as a production. So we're still in that thing of going what was design, what is design, where is design right now? Before I hand over to Eileen in a second, I wanted to just tell you about three things that are available for you to see today as well as in this room, out in the wider world of the NT. If you want to see props, as I said, being made right in front of your face right now today, upstairs in the Shirling walkway you can see that, you can see the um, sets being constructed and put together, it's always open. So if you're at the NT at any other time, nip up there and just have a look and see if you can work out which show is being made in front of you before you look at which show is being made in front of you. As I said, the Limbury Prize is, is on upstairs. One interesting thing from the Limbury Prize, we did it two years ago and we do it this year. Two years ago, one of the students that was involved in the finalists, the 12 finalists, chose to use AV in the production. This year, four. So you can see where my things might be going as we move through to our future. The other exhibition that's on in the NT at the moment is Costume at the NT. Really important, obviously. If we don't have people with clothes on, what will we come to theatre? Question for us all. Myself and colleagues are around all day to help you. We have lanyards on, there is no planned fire alarm, and with that out of the way, I would now like to welcome Eileen Hogan to the stage. Thank you all for coming. I'm Eileen, Eileen Hogan, Professor in Fine Art and Theatre at Wimbledon. And this symposium is the second in a series. It's part of the public programme of Camberwell, Chelsea and Wimbledon, University of the Arts London. And the first was staged in the real, which addressed different approaches to representation and reality, both past and present. And today, we explore the boundaries between real and virtual worlds on stage. I'm going to say something very briefly about the designer, um, Jocelyn Herbert. I mean, without her remarkable archive and funding from the Wootstein Hopkins Foundation and the Limbury Trust, we actually wouldn't all be sitting here today. And I'd like to acknowledge her influence. Um, the, organizing, the organizer of today's symposium, Dr. Matthew McFrederick, sitting at the end over there, um, first came to see Justin's archive in 2013, when it was at Wimbledon. As Judith said, it's now at the National Theatre Archive. To look at designs for um, Samuel Beckett's plays and George Devine's um, correspondence about the productions. I'm going to quote Matt now. Um, I'll admit I went there with little knowledge about Herbert, or set design more broadly. But what the archive did, quite emphatically, <laughs> was to introduce me to the world of theatre design in a way that I hadn't appreciated before. The artistry, the clarity, and the elegance of those designs has made a lasting impression on me. And it's not an exaggeration to say that working on the archive then, and subsequently, as a postdoctoral fellow, has reshaped my perspectives on theatre design, theatre practice, and teaching theatre ever since. Another colleague who's used Jocelyn's archive a lot is um, prize-winning designer Dr Sophie Jump, 
I can't see you, which is where you have my right at the back. <laughs> um, who will speak later today about her performance company, Seven Sisters. She worked on Justin's archive on her PhD, which examined key developments in theatre design in Britain between 1935 and 1965. And when she was a Justin Herbert Fellow, she produced an interactive website about the role of the theatre designer. I asked one of um, Justin's daughters, Sandra Lusada, what she thought Justin would make of it all. And um, she said her first reaction would be to think that we were all completely mad. <laughs> but then she would, perhaps secretly, be very pleased that her work has remained relevant. I'm sure um, that Justin would want to raise a glass, um, probably of Letsina, um, to celebrate the fact that Sophie has been appointed as senior lecturer um, for VA Theatre Design at Wimbledon and that Matt has been appointed as lecturer in theatre at Reading University. She would be very cheered that her work has contributed something to those two achievements. She would have very much liked the project that we do each year with BA2 students from Wimbledon in the archive. The project combines research into Justin's work, understanding historical works in their social and political context, and getting students to create new work from materials from the past. They also learn how to use an archive and to make presentations, um, one of which you'll see uh, later today. There are lots of plans for the future. Wimbledon's partnership with the National Theatre Archive will support the latest developments at Wimbledon, which are all to do with creating an integrated environment with collaborations between all the theatre courses, design, acting, technical arts and performance. I'd like to thank all the speakers in advance, and especially Matt, and our administrator, Gabrielle Gugujova, who is always um, fantastic to work with. Thanks also to inspiring colleagues at the, at the um, National Theatre, Judith Merritt and Erin Lee. And finally, my lovely co-conspirator, an entirely sane colleague, <laughs> <laughs> Professor Jane Colley, Collins, who I will now hand over to. Jane, I hope you're still safe. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. Oh, my bits here. Um, actually, I'm not Jane Collins at the moment. I'm standing in for Simon Betts, um, who is the Dean of uh, Camberwell, Chelsea and Wimbledon, the Dean of Performance. He, has, he sends his apologies. He's been um, called away to an urgent meeting at UAL, um, the topic of which you can probably imagine. Um, so actually, Eileen said a lot of what I was going to say, or Simon was going to say, I think, in terms of thanks. So I'll cut to uh, something I know that Simon wanted me to mention, and I'll do that very briefly, which, which are the recent developments at, um, at, across Camberwell, Chelsea and Wimbledon, and the formation of a new school of performance based at Wimbledon, uh, a performance school, basically. Staging mixed reality, which is now the norm in so much theatre production, has prompted much thought about how these new materials of the stage affect the performer. And we ask the question, are the old ways of training actors fit for purpose now? So into the well-established, and I say internationally recognised, mix of design and making courses at Wimbledon, we've now introduced two new courses, BA Acting and Performance and BA Contemporary Theatre and Performance. I suppose part of the questions underpin those courses, what does it mean to be an actor working in the midst of these multiple realities on stage? As Eileen says, the, the courses adapt, um, adopt an integrated approach with young actors working alongside sonographers and video designers and production designers for film and TV. I think what it shows is that the interdependency of all the elements that make up the performance event, how changes in, in one element have a knock-on effect on all the others, including the performers, and of course also in, including the audience. And I think that's one of, going to be one of the threads that might run through today. How do these new... Um, they're not new, but how, how is that now these technologies, which are so common, how are they affecting our ways of seeing and hearing what happens on the stage or in other 
uh, theatrical environments. So how we see and how we hear. And I'm really looking forward to listening and seeing the uh, stellar, stellar cast of, of, of practitioners and scholars that we have with us today. I know it's going to be a fantastic event and I thank you very much all of you for coming.